Okay, so I wanted to show you, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but I wanted to show you how I mix the ingredients and put all that kind of stuff into it. Okay, so, um, so today I'm using, um, this is my, my baking fl flour. I'm using the King Arthur um, um, high structure bread gluten um, flour. And so what I do is instead of using measuring cups and whatnot, I, I weigh all my ingredients. So, you know, I put, I put the ball on the scale and I press the button again and it zeroes it out. So it subtracts the weight of the, the actual bowl. bowl. Okay, then I take my flour. Now, I think this is kind of an important thing. And then I sift the, the flour through. Um, and that way then when I'm baking, I don't get big chunks. And I'm gonna put in 500 grams of, of flour. Now what some, sometimes people, they mix the, the flour. They like, they use different types of flour. Um, and I do that too sometimes, but for this, we're just gonna use um, this one, the, you know, the same kind of flour. So I'm at four or something, and I'm trying to get to 500. Okay, so that's, that might be a little bit too much, but that's okay, because I get this far, and I can see that I'm already over 500. Which is fine. So I'm just going to finish sifting it because it makes a bigger mess if I try to go from the sifter back into the canister. And then, so I'm at 618 actually. So that's way, way over. And then what I do, then I just start scooping, you know, start subtracting because it's just the flour. Now, when you're baking with sourdough, you often hear about the hydration levels. And so then what, and there's all sorts of calculators online, but basically the, the flour, um, however much flour you use is, a, is your 100%. And then when you add the other ingredients, especially the water, then depending how much water you add, that's your percentage of, you know, that's your hydration level. So we'll get to that in just a second. So the next thing is the salt. So I've already measured this out, but I would do it the same way. I would put it in, I would measure on here. I put, so I do 500 grams of flour. I do nine grams of salt and I put it over on the side. So then when I put my yeast in, then it doesn't, um, um, the salt will kill the yeast on contact or I'm told like pretty close to being on contact. So until I go to mix everything together, um, I don't want to, you know, I want to keep them separate. I guess that's basically what I'm saying. So again, I'm going to zero out the scale and I'm going to hit it again to zero it out. Okay, great. Cause, um, I want to pause for a second cause I need to get my spatula. Um, and then I'm going to put my, my, um, my starter in. Okay, so we're back. I just made sure that this was zeroed in because I bonked it. Sometimes that seems to throw off the, the scale. This is my starter. This is um, something I've been, it's a long story, but you can see the bubbles inside of it. And when you look at the very, very top of it, you can see the, um, and you can get close. It looks like there's little black dots on the top. They're not, they're actually not black dots. It's the bubbles that are forming. Um, it kind of looks like they sort of look like seeds or, or like that. There's something in there. It's really just the, the air coming up, um, against it. So long story short, um, I have this rubber spatula. I've, I've kind of wet it down. You can see if, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. There's a couple of beads of water. It just makes the, the starter a little less sticky on here. And so I need to add 50 grams of the starter. Now, this is the part where it gets a little bit imprecise. Um, I like to put it right into the bowl with the flour because it's so sticky that if I pre-weigh it, it gets stuck in the, 
uh, onto the, you know, like in the bowl like when I'm pre-weighing it. So that's 34 grams, so I need a little bit more. Now this is gonna be too much if I put the whole thing in. So I just kinda, and my hands are clean, I wash my hands. So I'm just gonna kinda tee some of it down. And I'm at 51. So it doesn't have to be exactly 50. You know, it's like 51 is, is more than close enough. Okay, now the last thing, so, so, so far I put in 500, 500 grams of flour. I put in nine grams of salt. I put in 50 grams of my, my leaven, or levine, probably, on my starter. Um, so the last thing is the water. So, um, because we have filtered water from the fridge, then I, I get the water, the filtered water. You can use tap, obviously, but a lot of tap water is, um, has chlorine in it, which would also help to kill the, the yeast. Okay, so since this is reality TV bread baking, um, we realized that um, my my assistant had did in fact use tap water. <gasps> oh no! So I was just saying that like we don't use tap water; we use the fridge water um, uh, because the the fridge water is is filtered as opposed to the chlorine that's in the in the tap water, which just isn't great for the baking. You can do it, but you know, anything that's gonna kill that yeast, we, we wanna avoid. So what I did was I got the, the water from the fridge, but it's cold, right? And um, there's a couple different lines of thought, but I've had better success that after I get the filtered water, I've microwaved a bowl of, of just regular water, so it's warm, and then I put I put the beaker with, a, with, the, uh, with the filtered water in there to warm up. And so we'll leave it in there for a few minutes um, and then we will proceed. Okay, so um, through the miracle of TV, we sped up the process. And as I was just saying that the water had been too cold. So for, you know, about five minutes, maybe less, I put it inside of a bowl of warm water. Voila, it heats up. So. Now what I want to do is I want to put about 375 uh, um, grams into to my bowl. So I'm going to turn on my scale. I'm going to zero it out. And I am going to pour in. So you want to keep in mind that as you're pouring, the scale has to catch up. 375. Fantastic. Now, what's great about how I do my bread, at least I think, is that I don't need the bread. My awesome wife found at a thrift store for me many years ago, this, they call it a Swedish spatula bread mixer. So now I just take it and I'm just going to start mixing in and you, you can actually hear kind of the, the leaven. It starts to bubble up. It's got the, the water. The water isn't warm, but it's room temperature. And because it's, it's, I'm going to say warmer than it being cold, then it starts to interact with the, the yeast and the dough um, even faster. Some people, and I don't think that they're wrong, um, think that you should use cold water because the yeast will still interact, um, but it slows, it slows it down, which adds more flavor. Um, I just seem to have better success with room temperature water with, with the bread rising. And so I'm a big believer in you go with what works. And so you can see that just by a little bit of stirring with this, you know, and I scrape the sides. So I make sure there's not really any like 
There's no, no, none of the starters stuck to the sides, none of the flour. I'm really getting just about everything. And because I sifted the flour, then I don't have any big clumps of a flour that then, then when it bakes, I would still get those. And I'm pretty much done. So at this point now, what I do is I just I put it down and I take a I take a, a tea towel. Uh, I'm gonna wet it down and I'm gonna put it over the 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 bowl. I'm gonna let it sit for an hour and then I'm gonna take my scraper again and I'm gonna shape it into a bowl one more time. And then I let it sit for 10, 12 hours easily, maybe, maybe more. Okay, so um, I just, uh, it's just silly, but I decided to just show you like this, the same towel I had before. I've wet it down. You can see like, even though I'm squeezing it, really no moisture is coming out. It's just kind of damp. And from what I understand, the reason for doing that is that it allows some, some moisture to wick in to the dough. Um, this is a really big, um, um, what do they call it, potato sack, um, tea towel kind of thing. So, you know, I'm just going to cover it. I'm going to put it in a non-drafty place. I like to put it here under the under the counter on the stool. And in one hour, I'll reshape it into a ball. Just using the scraper, it takes about 10 seconds. And then I'm going to let it sit. And the longer you let it sit, the better your bread's going to be. And so... By longer, I mean 10 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours. You go for a long time. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, so the bread's been sitting for um, for about two hours. Um, it really just needs a, an hour. I like an hour to two hours, and it kind of just flattens out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the scraper. We're just going to go around the bread give it a little bit of structure by kind of trying to put it into a rough ball. I never touch it with my hands, I just use this. This is not kneading or anything like that. This is just giving a little bit of structure. So I, I take off my, I call it a potato sack. I forget what, a flour sack, dish towel. But here we go, we see the, okay. Um, you see it's kind of all like rawr, I'm spread out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab it and I'm gonna like fold it in on itself. And I'm gonna do that just all the way around it. So then it has a little bit more structure to it. And I think that's supposed to help it as it bulk ferments, as it just sits and, and the yeast goes yum, 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 yum. So it's nothing special, it's nothing magical, but you see how it's sort of a, a ball shape. It's all that it does. Okay, nothing too special. I'm probably even doing it a little bit too much right now, but I just wanna demonstrate. I just kind of scoop it from underneath and pull it up and then do it from another angle. But that's about all. And now, I'm gonna put the cover on. I'm gonna put my my moist um, dish towel, and I don't use the ones that are that are furry and fuzzy, um, you know, that are like terry. This is more just a straight kind of cotton cloth. Um, it's moist. I put it on top. I'm just gonna let it sit for the next probably 16 hours or so, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I wanted to show you, here's the dough. Here's the dough after it's been bulk fermenting for, for um, at least 12 hours, 14 hours. And you can see that it has all these bubbles in it. And that's a really good thing. That's, that's the gas um, building up as the yeast has been eating away at the flour and, and the water and everything. Um, so now it's ready and I'm gonna dump it out. And you can see, can you see how it jiggles? And so I have my scraper and I wetted it down. And then with the scraper, I start to I start to work it out. And you can see 
almost like cobwebs or something. And that's the structure from the dough, the, the, the gluten builds up from what I understand, right? And so stretching is a good thing, but only to a point. Let's see, try to get some light on there. But we're gonna help it come down. And I put it on, I put some flour down. And it's one of those things where it's not too much flour, but not, not too little. So I'm just gonna scrape out because we've done all this work to get all this great dough. Okay, so it sits there. And then what we do is I'm gonna get some flour on my hands. And it seems like you can never get enough flour on your hands. And I don't know if you can see that, that's that's a great little bubble. And that's what's gonna help the, the, the bread to be light and fluffy. And so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna gently pull it back on top of itself. And I'm gonna gently lift. I'm gonna put down back down on the, the flour so it doesn't stick. Okay, and you can see it's still kind of sticking here and it, it'll stick to itself. So that's why when I try to get that loose stuff up. Okay, and I just kind of, I, I try to tuck it, after I do that first fold, then I just try to get it under itself. And I very gently, I don't want to pop any of those bubbles and I don't want to give it any more distress because once, once I brought it down from the bowl, that's a lot of distress and I gotta let it rest. So now I'm just gonna let it rest for 15, 20 minutes and then now I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so 15 minutes has gone by since when we took the dough out of the, the bowl, um, put it onto the board, shaped it, and then we'll let it rest. So what I didn't say was that um, I usually cover it because for whatever reason, I'm told that the dough doesn't like to have drafts. I don't know why. So. You can see the dough, it's kind of enlarged a little bit, not dramatically from last time, but it, it's enlarged. We can see the, we see the bubble. Um, and when you look around, you can see other like little bubbles and that's a good thing. You don't want to pop those, you don't want to deflate it. So the dough wants to be um, cared for gently. And so then I, I get my hands floury again. And then I just kind of lift it up and I roll and kind of tuck inside now because I can feel that it's still a little wet on the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna carefully then try to get this a little bit more dusty. Okay, I'm gonna put her down. You see how she gets all wrinkly? That means then now that some of the gas has like spread out and it's lost its shape, that's okay. But that just shows that I need to just kind of kind of turn and tuck. And the the technique that I've seen is like, let it like, just kind of spin it working down toward you. And when it gets there, then push it up. So then when it rests, now we're gonna let it rest. You can see the bubble has returned. It's gotten more gassy. We, we have a few other kind of bumps where they're coming back up and we're just gonna let it rest. And we're gonna do this for a total of three times. So that was the second time. And we're gonna do it one more time. We'll let it rest for 15 minutes. And then then it'll be time to put it in the oven. Okay? Okay, so I'm back. This is, um, we've, we've, um, we've dumped, dumped it out once. We folded it once. Now this is gonna be the third, the third time that we've shaped and stretched it. So again, I always like to cover it. You can see uh, the whole thing has kind of inflated. The, the bubble's still there, but the other bubbles, they've kind of, um, they've gone away because the, the whole thing's expanded. So the one last time, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take the dough and I'm gonna try tucking under as I bring it back. And as I bring it back, I'm gonna turn it and, and tuck underneath it. So, see, so yeah, I tuck underneath, I tuck underneath. I'm just kind of rolling it and tucking it but it's still kind of sticky. Here, I don't know if you can see down here. 
still kind of sticky. So I'm just gonna try to gently dislodge it and then bring it up here because I have flour up there. And I'm, I'm always either with like too much flour or not enough. So sorry about the arm. I'm gonna take a little bit of flour out. Okay, and so now one last time. Yeah, see that's better now. So I'm just gonna fold it and tuck it as I bring it closer to me. It's kind of like, like pie dough from what I'm told that like you don't want to handle it too much. And as you let it, as you work it, right, then you need to let it rest. So this is the, this is the third time that we've shaped it and folded it. There's no like set number, but I've learned you do it a few times. See, I'm starting to get like the bubbles here. And I still have this big guy here, right? So it's not rocket science. And then I'm just gonna cover it up and let it, let it, let it sit. Now, what I wanna show you is, then I have this basket. There's some kind of fancy French name for it, but it's very lightweight, it's wooden, um, it's ringed. You don't have to do it in here, you can put it in a normal bowl. But I'm gonna get it ready now for for this last, this last job. And what I do is I just kind of sprinkle some, some rice flour inside of it. And because I, as just like how we had to add flour to the other, um, to the board, we put a little bit of flour in here. We spread it around and, and for some reason we do rice flour, I guess it's lighter and it sticks less. And then that will help it to um, not stick. So the, this last time, I'm just gonna let it sit in here and um, I'm gonna let it rest for 15 minutes again. I'm gonna cover it up and then the next time we'll put it into the bowl. Okay, see you in 15 minutes. Okay, so it's been two hours. It's actually been like two hours and a little bit, but that's fine. So I just took this out of the fridge. As I had said, I, I, I wetted this down the, the top um, but look, you can see when I squeeze it, there's no, there's no water dripping out of it. It's moist, it's wet, now it's cold because it's been in the fridge, but um, there's no drippage. Okay, so then when you look at my dough, you can see that it's risen and, you know, roughly a third to a half larger than it was. Okay, so I'm going to take that out in just a second. So what I wanted to show you is... Then you're, you're gonna need two things. This is parchment paper, okay? And so you're gonna put the parchment paper to make sure that, that the dough doesn't stick inside your, your cast iron enamel, people like to call it Dutch pot, but since I'm anti-Dutch, then we're not gonna call it that, okay? So what I do is I take the, the paper, and I, and I like these because they're, they're kind of, they come pre-cut, pre-sided, and I just, I just stick it inside the, the pot and I, and so you can see like the, the ring around it. Okay, so just to do that. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take the, I've got the round from smushing it inside. I turn this upside down and voila, right? So there's my dough. It's got the rings from this beautiful basket, but the rings don't really affect anything other than it kind of helps to make it look cool. I drop it inside of my, my pot. Now, here's, here's the thing, where's my, okay. So I've got this fancy lom, right? It's kind of cool. What it really is, it's just a razor blade on a stick. And we use it to we use it to score the bread. Um, um, I use this. This is this is pretty cool. Um, it does a nice job. And then when you see that like the fancy designs that people have on their bread, when it comes out, they they use a lom. Um, uh, it's not necessary, but what is necessary is that you do need to score the bread. And the reason you score the bread is that as the bread bakes, it's going to expand. 
but if you don't score it, if you don't cut into it, then the bread can expand and um, you're not gonna get that fluffiness that, that you kinda want. It's gonna be a little bit more dense. So if you don't have a lam, then what you can use, what I often, what I use in the past is a serrated knife. And so you can do fancy designs. Um, there's one other thing that you can do. And so just to show that my scissors are missing, <laughs> um, we'll save that for another time. Um, so we'll save that for another time. But what, okay, we'll just edit this out. Um, no, that's okay. Oh yeah, yeah, let me have it. Okay, so then you can just use like regular scissors. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And what you can do is you can just kind of cut into the middle there. And then that's gonna provide enough for, for the dough to, to build up, uh, to expand and to grow out, and you have a nice start. The other thing you, you can do, and I'll just show just a little bit here, is you can, you can kind of cut, and people do all sorts of designs and stuff, but, and so by doing these, these like little kind of things here, then it allows the, the dough to expand. So, um, and that's why you often see a fancy loaf of artisan bread where there's a, there's a ridge. Some they call it the elves here. Sometimes it looks like a shark fin, you know, um, it's whatever you want to call it. But the idea is to cut into the bread so then as it expands, it can it can expand out more. Now we put the the lid back on, and we're gonna put it into the oven in just a second. Because of our oven, what I've learned is that um, the the heat is so strong from the bottom that I um, I need to put in an air pan and a cookie sheet underneath it. So I already have those in the oven that are kind of hot. And I take them out. The oven's at 450. I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna put it in, I want you to know that I'm putting it in with the, the lid on. And the lid's gonna be on for 20 minutes. And that's to help to build up the, the, the crust. And then what I'm gonna do in the next video is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna have a pan with some boiling water in it that I'll put in right here and then that will help to create more steam. Um, but I don't do that into the second phase. So I'm gonna put this in. And we'll let it bake for 20 minutes. And then we'll be back. Hey everybody. So here I am back. As I was telling you, I have, um, um, I prepared a pot of boiling water and I pour it. Sorry for the crazy camera work. I am going solo on filming right now. So it's all on me. So I'm a little rusty doing this way. But anyway, as you can see, I've prepared boiling water. I put it into a pan because I'm gonna take the lid off. And you can see, you can see as it slides back how much more um, it's risen. Just one more quick look at the bread. And we can see that it's 
risen. I'm gonna now set the timer for 30 minutes. And then in 30 minutes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bread out of the pan, out of the, uh, out of the oven, we're gonna, and then put it back into the oven for a few more minutes. So that's the next segment and we'll be back in a few. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes and my timer's going off, so I gotta turn off, turn off my timer, of course. Uh, last thing we did was we put the, we, we took the lid off here and we put the, um, the pan with the boiling water to create more steam. You don't have to do that. I like to do it just because I like the crust to be a little bit more crunchy. I think there's a lot of flavor there. That's what I like, um, especially the heel. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up the oven. I'm gonna take the, the pot out that has the, the bread in it. I'm gonna remove the, the bread and put the pot down, but I'm gonna put the bread back into the oven and just to cook it right on the cookie sheet for the last like 10, 11 minutes. Okay, so here we go. And of course, there's so much steam that my glasses get steamed up. It's looking really good. And it just pops right out, partially thankfully, thankfulness, thankfully, thank, to the, um, to the parchment paper. And now I'm just gonna put it back in. I'm gonna put it next to the, I'm gonna leave the, the water in there. And we close her up. Um, I know my oven, so I usually like it um, for about 11 minutes, but for everybody else, I would suggest that you put it in for 10 minutes and just see how it looks. Sometimes I, I even leave it in longer, but 10 minutes is sort of my baseline. So we'll come back in 11 minutes and we'll see how it looks. Hey everybody, so here I am, I'm back. My oven's beeping. This could be the last stage. We're gonna take a look and see how the bread is doing. Or I should say the second to last stage. Turn on the timer. I'm gonna put on my hot gloves. Ooh, I got steamy glasses again. So the bread's looking really good to me, but it's still looking a little bit light. Now what I wanna do is I wanna look at the bottom and I've got a couple dark spots here, right? But they're not so dark that I'm super worried about it. The rest of it looks a little light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin it around and put it in for a couple more minutes. I'm gonna put the light side toward the center because I know that's where my hot spot is. And I'm gonna set the timer for two more minutes. We'll see you again in two minutes. Okay, so it's been two minutes. And so now it's been in the oven for about a total of 12 minutes for the, the final stage without the pot. We're gonna check it out, see how it looks. Okay, this time, ha ha, the steam didn't get me. And look, my, my number one main concern is the bottom. And I tap on it and it sounds hollow, so I know it's cooked through. It's starting to get a little dark, but I feel like this is still kind of light. The tips are getting dark. I'm gonna put it in for another two minutes and then I think it'll be perfect. So two more minutes. The thing I wanna stress is at this point, it's up to you. Do you like your bread darker? Do you like it lighter? I like it just a little bit darker like that, but obviously not burned. So it's up to taste. The big thing is to tap on the bottom. And if you get that hollow kind of drum sound, then that's a really good sign that, that your bread is is baked all the way through. So we'll check it out in two more minutes. Okay, so the wonders of TV and video, of course. So our time has gone by very quickly. Most likely, like, this is gonna be the last time. I'm just gonna, in fact, without even looking at it, I'm gonna tell you, I'm turning off the oven right now. Um, I'm, I've stopped the timer. Um, I'm not gonna let it go anymore because I don't wanna, I don't want it to, to burn and get black and then nobody likes to eat burnt bread. So I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna wait for the fog to go down. And here we go. And then we look at it and we can see, um, and I, I, 
the bottom not not black just kind of dark and when i tap it i don't know if you can hear it on the on the camera but it sounds quite hollow the top by 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 just cutting it then it allowed the the bread to rise and expand so and then we can still see some of the rings from from the basket now we put it in a wire on a wire surface so then the heat underneath it can cool the 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 heat can dissipate underneath and it doesn't keep baking on the bottom we're gonna let it sit for anywhere between a half hour to an hour i think this is the hardest part is when you know you have a good loaf and it smells so good it's just to let it sit but you want to let it sit because i don't know there's something about the heat and the gluten and the, the fabric of the bread but it wants to it wants to cool down it's kind of fun if you can listen to it sometimes it'll crackle um, um the house is pretty warm right now so it's not crackling too much but um you put in oh, I gotta, oh there it goes here we'll just listen for a minute And so to me, that's a good sign. So we'll, we'll just let it sit for a half hour to an hour and then we'll cut into it and see how it looks, okay? Hey, okay, so the bread's cold, it's out. We've, we've actually sliced into it. Looks really good. Like I said, it gets a little bit darker before it finishes. You know, like by the time it dries, it cools off. And so we sliced into it and look at that nice fluffy almost like a french loaf look at the holes in that and then let's look on the inside and look at look at these big holes here and then we've got lots of little holes and that's all from remember when we had the the dough before like when we were shaping it and that's all the gas bubbles that that are building up and building up and so that gas just gets trapped inside it makes the bread fluffy and so then it's not dense and um, light and airy and then let's look one more time here at like the, the crust line how like it, it almost goes immediately to the crust and that there's not like a thick dough kind of build up of, of the bread and so that's how I like it you make it however you want this is considered to be a high hydration so there's lots of water it's about 73% um, water compared to the amount of flour that's in it um, you can do it a little bit less and it will have less um, it'll be a little bit more dense so it just depends on how you like it thanks for watching